Within the past few weeks of this video being released, Zewo finally released the ASIR app 2.0 version. Now, while it has been around for testing for a while, it's finally in all of the app stores. So if you live in an area where the weather doesn't play nice and it's been a little bit since you've used the app, here are some things you're gonna wanna know. So let's go ahead and dive right into the app. When you first open up the app, you'll notice that there are a few changes. It no longer directly goes into the ASIR. There's a new screen before going into the ASIR control section. At the bottom, you'll see links for the ASIR, which goes into the normal controls, community, where you can look at other images, nearby, where you can see other ASIR users in your area and what they've been up to, and finally, me, which is your profile. So for now, we're gonna skip the additions to the control section, and we're gonna to go over the rest of them, starting with community. So if you go into the community tab, you will see that it's kind of like Zewo's version of Astrobin. So you can scroll through and look at people's images and see, wow, that's awesome, uh, M42, the rosette. You can scroll through and just find a lot of stuff. Now where this shines is showing you what is capable with certain combinations of gear. There are quite a few categories up at the top there to check out as well, so you can go deep sky only, where you can do planetary, where you can see what other people have been doing with our planetary neighbors. You can do solar, lunar, wide field, night sky, and of course there's other stuff like astroscapes and Equipment. There are a bunch of different categories to work with. Now the great thing about this is this can help you figure out what your specific setup is. Maybe you want to do a wide field DSLR shot. You can see what other people are doing with gear similar to yours or if you're doing a deep sky object with a Zewo cam, you can see what that's capable of as well. Let's go back to the deep sky section and I'm going to find a username that's a little bit easier. We'll just go with this Orion one that I complimented. So Antares here shot M42 image type deep sky and then at the bottom you can see he used a skywatcher black diamond ed80 an eq6r pro with the 294 mc which is what i have and he used the asir plus to control it all this is very awesome for just reviewing what combinations are possible and the combinations are endless as long as it's a DSLR, either Canon, Nikon, or one of Zewo's cam. Now, if you wanna add your own photo, what you do down in the bottom right here above me, there's a little plus sign. That's what you tap on and then you just select your image. So here you can see all of my Astra images. I actually have the edited versions saved to this tablet and some unedited ones as well. But say I wanted to add, uh, let's go with this Rosette Nebula. So I would go ahead and type in, taken in, you know, and just put a date. I think it was February. Now I know this was taken over two nights, so I'll go ahead and put that in. And then image type. This is where you put the category in, and we'll just go ahead and do deep sky. When you go in to set your location, it will ask you for an address, or you can click anywhere on the map. Working with the map is a little bit wonky, so if you actually type in the address, this works a lot better. Okay, so when you type in the address, you'll have to type in it exactly like that. The actual street address, with the state or province and the zip code if there is one or you know whatever your actual address is and make sure your country is there which is odd because this address i'm putting in here is the address to wagman observatory that is owned by the amateur astronomers association here in pittsburgh and it's not letting me select it so for now i have no idea whose address this is but i'm just going to go ahead and put that in just to get through this and we're going to go over a couple things with this location thing here in a minute so under the device section this is where you add all your gear and since i've already added all of my gear i can just go ahead and tap all of it and save there we go all of my gear is there and then just go ahead and hit post all right and this will take a second so we'll go ahead and skip ahead until this is done one thing i just found out about this is where it says up at the top there the files max file size is 30 megabytes the skull nebula picture is actually 29 ish and it was erroring out on me. So we're gonna pick a smaller file. All right, so we will go with the Soul Nebula. This Soul Nebula picture is the same one that is from my PixInsight processing video. Before we edit anything else, we'll make sure the uh, counter there, there it went. And we'll set it to deep sky. And we'll leave the uh, address alone and then go ahead and put all the gear in. 
The only thing I didn't list yet is the filters, so we'll go ahead and add that in. And I was using the Optolong. Okay, so the only thing that's not in here is the filters and it actually doesn't have a database of filters yet. If you use any filters, especially if you're running a mono camera, you're not gonna be able to put the filters in there. So you might wanna put those in the description. So I'll add that in. Okay, and now that we're done with that, image is there. Now we see this has been posted and you can even go through and scroll through the app and find this yourself. So if I go ahead and tap on it, it has all of the data that we put in and any comments that may come in as well. Two other sections for the community tab are following. So if you follow anybody, it'll just show you specifically their stuff. And then featured, which is pics that, uh, I don't know if this is manual or if it's an algorithm, but it's uh, just top uh, pictures in this app. But that's it for the community tab. Uh, if we go to the nearby tab, it brings up a map and it takes a while for it to load. But if I zoom way out, you can start to see where users are all across the uh, world. Now it does bunch people up the farther you zoom out, so keep that in mind. One thing that is a bit of a bummer is that the map defaults to Chinese. Even with turning everything to your specific language, you're still gonna see it in Chinese. So if you know how to read a map, it's not really that big of a problem, but if you're looking somewhere new and you're not quite sure where it is, you might need to consult like Google Maps or Apple Maps. Look in that area and look for some features that you can see on this app. Okay, and if we go to the me section, this is where all of your stuff is. And we look and we see that I've only posted two images, that that's okay. Um, just messing around with it. In your me section, if you liked anything or picked anything, you can go ahead and see those as well. But there are a few things that you're gonna wanna do. Up in the upper right here, there is this gear icon. And this brings up all your settings. So in your profile, this is where you can mess with certain things like your region and uh, your gender, if you wanna put that in, if you wanna put in your bio. Uh, I have not filled that out yet, uh, but I will, and it will also include uh, YouTube information. Your account security, notifications if you wanna see them. Uh, your theme mode, you can do a dark or a light mode, which is kinda cool, so based on your preference. But what you're definitely gonna wanna do here is under privacy, if you're somebody who values your security, you'll wanna turn these all off by default. That way you keep yourself safe. There was some concerns that we're gonna go over here in a minute and I'll explain why, but this is where you would turn all that off. The other thing that you will want to do is go back out to the main settings and go to language and then set it to your preferred language. So you'll either wanna set it to follow system, uh, defaults to Chinese or English. And then for translate, just turn on the translate feature and make, make it set to your specific language. A bummer right now is that there's English, French, and Spanish, and then two languages that I cannot read. So they have not covered all the bases for major populations such as India or Portuguese or German, you know, the various languages that are out there. I expect that they will be coming over time, but for now, as of the beginning of December in 2022, it is rather limited. All right, and now that we are done with that, let us go into the air. So in order to do this, if you're using a tablet or your cell phone, you will need to be on your regular Wi-Fi or your cell phone network to get to all the community-based features. Once you're ready to go into the air, you will have to switch your network over to the ASI Air unless you set it up to be on your home Wi-Fi. Now for this video, I am using the ASI Air Mini, but I do not have it on my home Wi-Fi. So I've went ahead and already switched over. So we'll just click enter device. And then we will get the usual splash, just like we used to. Just as usual, it'll come up with the page with the GPS, which mount you wanna use, telescope and camera and all that stuff. If you have it all plugged in, go ahead and go on in. So the first real thing that if you been away for a while that you might not know about is down in the bottom left here they added in a sky atlas so it's kind of like Stellarium the neat thing here is that by default they add in what your view is with the camera and telescope combination is that you have plugged in so you can pinch and uh, squeeze and all that stuff and slide to move it all around is exactly how you want it and let's say I wanted to look at the Pleiades. 
I can zoom in up here, and even though the moon is right below it tonight as I record this, we can see that that's what my framing would look like with my current rotation and my current uh, setup. The other neat thing here too is that it can help you plan a mosaic. So let's scoot over a little bit to Perseus. My setup currently is not big enough for the California Nebula. So if I rotate this, overlap in now I am able to do a mosaic of the California Nebula and get the whole thing with this setup and that is just a brief look at mosaic mode we are gonna go a little bit more in depth since they released this my old mosaic mode while still works is not really the best so we'll go over that as the focus of another video backing out there are a few other things that you can see that have changed for example up in the top menu bar here if you have a zero camera installed it will actually show the picture of a zero camera now i actually just unplugged the camera and now the icon up there changed to that of a dslr which is a pretty nifty change. Not really needed, but nifty. Oh, and when you have your storage as well, if you plug in a thumb drive, the icon over here uh, where it says EMMC will change as well. The only other things that have kind of been major changes at this point is under experimental feature, there's all sky polar line, which is helpful if you live in a location where you're shooting, but you can't see your respective pole. The last major change, and we're gonna go over this with the mosaic mode video, is going into the menu where you select which mode you wanna be in. Plan mode is where you would actually set up the mosaic. So uh, as you can see here, I've already taken a shot of the California Nebula and found out a few things that I will help explain when we go over mosaics in that video. Right now, I'm just waiting for rain to go away and the moon to change phases. It's a little bit too close to the California Nebula right now. All in all, the updates are great, but there is a slight wish list that I do have just to try to improve things just a little bit. Now, before I jump into the wish list, I do have a question for you. What app features do you wanna have added that they still haven't added yet? I know what I'm about to say. After you hear what I have to say, go ahead and put your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, I expect that things are gonna change over time, but the first thing that I kind of have issues with is that location thing when you're uploading a picture. I am somebody who is security conscious of where I live. Sure, I've put it on other videos that I live in Pittsburgh, which is exactly where I live. And that is no secret. However, I don't want you guys knowing my exact address. And I'm sure that people looking in the nearby and in the community tabs are gonna wanna think the same. So, I would think make location optional. At minimum, maybe just require the country or the state or the province. Give the user a little bit of control on how precise they wanna be with their location information. Either way, I saw some discussion about this on Zewo's Facebook group, and I agree with some people that they don't like that feature. Another great addition over time that could be implemented, a planning mode would be great, where you don't have to have the ASI Air actually turned on and connected to it. Where once you're already into it once, save the profile of the ASI Air and the gear attached to it. That way, if you're sitting you know, at home on a rainy afternoon, you can still go in there and scroll around and see what's gonna be visible in the next week or two with your gear and maybe plan out your next session a bit. And with mosaics, it would be nice to be able to save that plan that I just showed you and actually run it a couple days later when the moon isn't so close to that nebula. And the third thing that I have as a wish list item, come on, Zewo. I said this already, red mode, please. Come on, it is an astronomy application. You should see the number of ASI errors that I saw at Cherry Springs State Park this year at both star parties. Having red mode for the app and a place like that would be fantastic. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I wanna thank you for watching. Clear skies.